Beloved sisters and brothers, good morning. My apologies for lateness. I understood the service was at 8 o'clock. However, I was reminded just a few minutes ago. So with that said, I invite us to bow our heads as we pray. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. Let's forget about ourselves, concentrate on him, and worship him. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Break us, melt us, shape us and fill us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. We pray. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us such blessings through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your service through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We stand for the hymn.
the lectionary and readings for the third Sunday of Easter. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Hallelujah. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your word and your church. Grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice, and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. The Collect for Purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. presence of Pilate, though he decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you and kill the altar of life. 
whom God raised from the dead, to this we are witness. And by faith in his name, his name is itself made in this man strong, whom you see and know. The faith that is through Jesus has given him the perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know you acted in ignorance and did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sin may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. reading from the Word of God, according to 1 John, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him 
or know him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. continuation of the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to Christ our Savior. Luke chapter 24 beginning at 36. At that time, Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they had seen a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I, myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving, and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, 
These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. That everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to be raised from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Beloved sisters and brothers, it is good to be here to share with you in this act of worship. We have come as a family from St. Andrew Parish Church. We have our choir, the musical director. We also have uh, some of our servers, along with our church army officer and myself. On this day, as we do the exchange within the deanery of St. Andrew, it is a joy for me as the rural dean of St. Andrew to be a part of the worship experience here at St. Mary the Virgin. Today we come to offer our worship on the third Sunday of Easter. The readings that we have heard point to the presence of the risen Christ. The narrative is according to Luke, not Matthew or Mark or John, but Luke's account of the resurrection. The emphasis is on uh, the senses, the senses, and how many do we have? Six, I hear someone say six, it's an another number, I hear five over there, and where else? Anyone else? Five, I hear an overwhelming five. We have five. There is the sight. There is to smell, to hear, to taste, to touch and feel. Which one is used the most? The sight. 
Which one is abused the most? The sight. So you understand the need for glasses. Yet, we hear in the narrative a question be asked. And so, I suggest to you in this question, what is in the eating? Do you purchase a pair of shoes without first trying it on? Some people do. That is so unfortunate. For so many now shop online since the pandemic. And they have had accidents. Because when it comes, they realize that, well, I ordered size 8. But really, the 8 online doesn't fit me because I should have ordered 8 wide. So it means that we need to try it on first. We need also to see that our experience is that we t the tasting is in the easting. It is in the tasting that we know what it is. We have to taste in order to know what it is. Jesus says, touch me, see me, feel me, beloved. We are baptized to proclaim the risen faith of Jesus. We are baptized to proclaim the risen faith of Christ. In life, do we accept things on face value? Some of us do. We want to see, touch, feel, verify with our senses. For we need to have the experience as the evidence to show that what we see, touch, and feel is real. It is our experience that verifies what we have to do, our decision-making, our actions. As the disciples encounter the risen Christ, on that first Easter Sunday, they continued to talk about their experience as they were able to reflect on the two who went on the road to Emmaus and had the presence of the risen Christ, didn't know until they invited him to say prayers, to say the grace. And then Jesus did something. Something which has remained lasting throughout the centuries. Action, the threefold action. He took what? What did he take? Bread. What did he take? And what did he do? Next, give thanks. What did he do? He took the bread and he what? Give thanks. He what? I can't hear you. I need to hear you. He what? He gave thanks. He took the bread. He gave thanks. And next, he broke it. The threefold actions which has remained at the center of our Eucharistic worship. It identifies us as a people of the resurrection. So we come together on the first day of the week to celebrate this new covenant of breaking of bread. For it was in the breaking of the bread that they realized, aha, it is Jesus. Despite having the experience, there was still doubt. There was still disbelief. So now, according to Luke, they are behind uh, locked doors. They are behind uh, closed doors. 
and behind the closed locked doors, the reason Christ stepped in and his words, which you also hear in the narrative from John's Gospel. Shalom Aleichem. Peace be with you. The first words of the risen Christ. What moved Jesus to express these words in the Hebrew, Shalom Aleichem. Peace be with you. To these disciples and the women who were behind a locked door for fear. Why fear? Let us not forget that Jesus had been arrested, tried on false charges, crucified. He's raised for them to associate with this person who had been charged with sedition and blasphemy. He said, I'm the son of God. How could he be? There's only one, the emperor, Caesar. So he's competing with Caesar, so we can't tolerate him, so he had to be crucified. So if we are associated with him who was crucified, then what does it mean for us? We too, by association, will be arrested and crucified. So you better hide behind closed door. Fear. Despite the experience there is still disbelief. Sisters and brothers, are we still behind the closed doors? Are we still locked into disbelief? There are so many who still don't believe that the crucified one is risen. The crucified Jesus is the risen Christ who walks with us. And so we as baptized disciples of Jesus are given a charge, a mandate. We are commissioned to proclaim what we have experienced. To tell others what we have experienced. And all of us have had experiences of the risen Christ Jesus. We have had the experience of seeing the nail prints in his hands. We have had the experience, we have the experience of the nail prints in his feet. We have the experience of his wounded side. For we do sing, when his wounded hands touch mine, when his wounded hands touch mine, my Set me free for all eternity when his wounded hands touch mine. Sisters and brothers, when his wounded hands touch us and we feel dispirited, Jesus lift us up. When we feel disheartened, when we feel dispirited, when the crisis and the challenges of life hit us, it is the wounded hands of Jesus that is able to lift us up. Let me hear somebody say, Amen and Amen. For well, beloved, daily we face the storms and the stress of life. And the storms and the stress of life is able to shake us. And for some, they are shattered. It is the presence of the risen Christ that is able to lift us up, to raise us up when we feel dispirited. You know what that means? You know all the time people, sometimes when they get up and say, Lord, I feel low in my spirit. Young people, you know that phrase? When this, I hear you. Well, you see, 
the senior people, they have listened to the older ones. And they did hear the grandmother say, you know, this morning, Miss Spirit Low. It is when we feel dispirited, when we feel disheartened, when we feel frustrated, when we feel that we are in a cul-de-sac, a dead end, and we can't find any way out. When we face these challenges in our situation, we need to know the presence of the risen Christ. The one who walks with us and the one who talks with us. And when we experience that presence, we need to hear his voice saying, Peace be with you. St. Julian of Norwich, that saint, interpret those words to mean just this. All is well. All is well. And all manner of things shall be well. So Bob Marley said, Don't you worry about a thing For every little thing gonna be all I saw we sing, but some of you not believe it. Come on, sisters and brothers. Because after we pray and we say we turn it over to the Lord, we still continue to, yeah, we, we still fret. And we still worry. But then we say we have turned it over to the risen Christ. We turn it over to the Lord. Since you turn it over to the Lord, why are you trying to use your cognitive ability to work it out and find a solution? Why are you moved to use your mind to find a solution about a problem that you cannot fix? Help me to understand this human activity and more so by Christian disciples. They were behind uh, locked doors, closed doors. Their minds were locked. And note what the narrative says. Jesus had uh, to lead them and teach them. Didn't you know that the Messiah would be crucified? Don't you know? Read the scriptures that he would be raised. So it is the scriptures, the reflection on the word of God, the scriptures that was able to open their minds. So what do we have as a church? What do we have as a Christian community? What do we have? We have the scriptures. We have the word of God, the scriptures. So we must first be immersed in the scriptures. We need to know the scriptures. But then when we have Bible study, few people turn up. So how do we know understand the scriptures? It's a reflection of our commitment. But here it is. Jesus pointed out that there is need to proclaim a message. The message of peace and forgiveness. The message of peace and transformation. The message of peace and conversion. Proclaim it in the name of Jesus. But what should move us to proclaim such a message in our digital world? A world that is now immersed in what is digital and material. A world that invites us in a culture to measure ourselves according to what we have and what we can get. A materialistic world. 
A world that says that we must measure ourselves by what we have. What investment we have. What savings we have. The culture of the world is seducing us to see life just according to what you can touch and feel. But Jesus says, hello, it's more than that. Notice he says, I am not a dopey. I am not a ghost. Ghost doesn't have flesh and blood. I am real. Come and experience me and you will experience the abundant life, the new life. The new life of peace. The new life of joy. And what Jesus is saying, as we hear in John's Gospel, chapter 14 and verse 27, is that you're not going to find it in a different world. The peace, the joy, you're not going to find it in things material. The security that we desire, you ain't going to find it with the currency of money. For Jesus says in that text from John 14, verse 27, Shalom, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. And what he says further, not, oh come sisters and brothers, not as, as the world gives. And so we proclaim a message in a culture and a world that has been seduced to believe that security is in currency. No, sir? Not true, because we're on things. We're on things. Dollar on things. How sad. How sad. How sad. What a sin. You know, I, I, I told the story, I think it was the last week or Easter Sunday at St. Andrew. This is not a makeup story, this is something very real, very true. About someone who had worked very hard over the years, and she and her spouse and family, they had their home and everything, and uh, had now gotten to the point of retirement. So they said, well, we're going to take a trip. And so they both went and they got you know, some new outfit, nice things. They purchased of a new car, did some painting up of the house, and everything was set to go on the trip. And a few days before, Bob's, somebody got sick. Couldn't go on the trip. And from that point onwards, it was in and out of hospital. I remember going to see her. You know, she said, Don't look for me. Look on the nice world and lovely dress the accessories, and look at the shoes, and boy, she had a whole closet filled with shoes. And said, look on the car. I said, Father, the dress, the frock, they can't fit me no more, you know. Look on my draw down. Can I drive the car? I like the current ceremony I have. You can't help me. We're just in the bed. I said, Father, I just do not feel, I don't feel for going. And so I said, but don't you pray? She said, yes. I said, well, we pray. I said, you have prayers. And pray. And when you pray, you need to know and feel the presence of the Lord. When you pray, you need to know and feel the presence of the Lord. So let us pray. Make me pray. At the end of it, she said, No, Father, I must pray like the way you pray. I said, When I pray, I tell the Lord how I feel. 
Yeah, may I go stress him out. In our prayers, we have to experience the presence of the risen Jesus. The one who forgives us even when we doubt. The one who forgives us even when we are fearful. The one who are, will forgive us even when we are anxious. The one who forgives us even when we say, boy, well, we don't know it will work out. Then who else are going to know it will work out? Not the Lord Jesus. So we have this experience and message to tell others that life is worth living because of Jesus Christ. And you need to know the presence of the risen Jesus Christ because we have in our DNA a selfish sin. And although we are created for relationship and to relate to each other, there is selfish sin in the DNA that causes me to create problem in relationship. And who alone can help me? The medical doctor? The clinical psychologist, the counselor. Who can help us? Only God and God alone. For it is only God alone that knows the thoughts of our hearts. It is only God and God alone that knows our secret motives. It is only God and God alone that understands our minds, our thoughts, our hearts. So only God and God alone in Jesus Christ can heal us by the Holy Spirit. For we need healing. Healing in our minds. For we have in our DNA selfish sin. And selfish sin affects the way we relate. And so it calls in many instances, our relationships to be broken, to be impaired, because sometimes we say things we shouldn't say and we hurt smuddy. No, so? Let me hear you say, no, so? How oh, true. At times we say things that hurt people. At times people say things that distress us and turn us off. And so some people say, me now come back to church. And so the healing that comes with the peace of Jesus who says shalom is to heal us. And say you are forgiven because you too hurt others. You too still have DNA sin. And it is the blood of Jesus poured out on the cross that is able to cleanse us and forgive us and heal us so that we can relate sincerely, genuinely. That's what healing does. It helps you to admit the person that you are, to acknowledge the person that you are. That I have faults. I too am broken. And it is only when we heal that we can respond to others in an authentic, genuine way. So sometimes when somebody points out your fault, you say, No, some is still. You know, left me. The healing of the Spirit of God, the wounded hands of Jesus, help us to say, No, left me, but the Lord forgives me. The Lord accepts me as I am. And by the grace and the mercy of God, I am being healed. So we hear about the forgiveness, the absolution of penitent, of the contrite. So the world needs to experience the message of Jesus. They need the Easter faith because the world is in conflict. There's too much tension in the world. Look at the Middle EBs. You see what happened over there, so? We might be on the way, brink of World War III. And it affects all of us. Because the 
food ships can will no longer be able to go through the Suez Canal. So they have to go way down at the bottom of Africa and come up. Means the price are gonna go up. All the nice things you want to shop online. It's going to go up. So there is conflict and tension. Because man to man is so unjust. You don't know who to trust. Selfish sin. So Jesus says, Go and proclaim the good news of forgiveness. The good news that you are loved by God the Father who has raised me in the power of the Spirit. Go and proclaim what you have experienced. Because you have encountered the risen Christ. You know the risen Christ. You have experienced the risen Christ Jesus. And out of your experience and encounter, you can tell somebody that you know who Jesus is because you have been touched by the wounded hands of Jesus. You tell others because you feel it and you know it that you have been touched by the wounded hands of Jesus. So the hymn writer says, I know a risen Savior is in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his arms of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He and he lies. Salvation to impart you. We are baptized to tell others about the risen Christ Jesus, for he lives within us and among us. Amen. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Eight fifty days of Easter, we use the Apostles' Creed as we new renew the Easter faith. The Apostles' Creed, let us stand. Page 106 of the Book of Common Prayer. We stand for the Apostles' Creed, the creed of our baptism. I believe in God.
Form C, page 108. With all our hearts and all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the peace and welfare of the world, for the witness and work of the church, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops and all ministers of God's word and sacraments, that they may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the Lord's coming. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the leaders of the nations and for those in authority among us, that they may serve justice and promote the freedom and dignity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, and for all who labor in the cause of human liberation and fulfillment, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, the suffering, the sorrowful and the dying, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from the ravages of hurricane, earthquake, drought, or flood, and for a just and proper use of God's creation. Let us pray to the Lord. For ourselves and for all who confess the name of Christ, that we may show forth the excellences of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all distressed persons. We pray for our neighbors, Haiti. We pray and remember the people of Gaza, the Palestinians. We pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for those people who are experiencing dislocation because of armed conflict and threat to their lives. Lord, in your mercy, remember and pray for persons who are victims of domestic violence, those who are victims of human trafficking. We pray for our children. Remember those who are facing exams at this time, that the wisdom of the Lord will guide them. We pray for those who experience oppression, those persons who have been dislocated out of fear. Lord, in your mercy, we pray that we may be strengthened by the Easter faith. That as we receive the broken body and the blood of the cup, the renewed power and presence of God will strengthen us to proclaim the risen Christ who is Savior and Lord. The God who in Jesus has rescued us from sin and death and given us the new abundant life and his eternal peace of his presence. Lord, in your mercy, Remember those who are not well, those who have recently received uh, bad news from their doctors. Remember the victims of cancer and lupus. 
We pray that the healing presence and power of God will strengthen them, will lift up the disheartened, uh, will lift up the dispirited, uh, to sustain them with His grace and mercy. Lord God, be with your children at this time. Be their defender, their refuge, the bulwark against all intimidation and fear. All that will impair their health, strengthen them. Lord, in your mercy. Twenty-three, the act of penitence. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. And God will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God. We have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We use form A for the greeting of peace. We are the body of Christ. By the one spirit, we all baptized into one body. And of all be made to drink of the one spirit. Let us then pursue the things that make for peace and build up the common life. Beloved, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Shalom.
six, prayer B. We now come to offer ourselves, our lives, the labors of our hands, all that we have and all that we are for the work of the Lord within the Lord's church and for the ministry of our Lord. We pray, Father, we offer to you these gifts which you have given us, this bread, this wine, this money. With them we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work to become through your Holy Spirit a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become channels of your love through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ the Lord. For he is a true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us eternal life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Eucharistic Prayer B, page 135. Holy and gracious Father, all creation rightly gives you praise, all life, all holiness comes from you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord, whom you sent to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. We therefore bring you these gifts, and we ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who offered himself in obedience to your will, the perfect sacrifice for all humankind. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks,
He gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is said for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension, his continual intercession for us in heaven, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and life-giving sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering, and grant that we will eat and drink these holy gifts, may be filled with your Holy Spirit, and become one body in Christ, and serve in unity, constancy, and peace. May he make us a perpetual offering to you and enable us in communion with Blessed Mary, the blessed apostles, and the whole company of heaven to share in the inheritance of your saints. With him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, o Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread.
Behold, he who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. The gifts of God for the people of God. Our souls will feast and be satisfied, and we will sing thy songs of praise to him.
Let us turn to page 148, the second post-communion prayer. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follow me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Drop thy still jewels of quietness, till all our striving cease. Take from our souls the strain and stress, and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace. As we stand, we pray. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Bow your head for God's blessing. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And unto God's gracious mercy and protection we commit you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and forever. seated. Good morning, sisters and brothers in Christ those of you here in church and those online. If you're feeling the spirit and presence of our risen Lord, say amen. amen. I'd like to offer a warm welcome to our visitors from St. Andrew Parish Church. This morning, I hear welcome back. <laughs> in church, we also have Sister Patricia Castrota from St. Margaret. Are there any other visitors in church that we did not recognize when you were coming in? Could you please stand? Let us welcome you warmly. Um, there, we have a visitor's book at the back. We ask you to sign it on your way out. Um, Birthdays and anniversaries and special occasion. I understand that today, not today, on Wednesday coming, a couple, a lively couple in this church will be celebrating 20 years of marriage. Brother Sheldon and Sister Carlene Green. Anybody celebrating birthday, please we're going to ask you to offer blessings on them. Birthdays. Claudia.
Brother Lens. Brothers and sisters, yes. we also understand that this week, Canon also celebrates a birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birth. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. Happy birthday to you. Continuing on the notices. Um, we're asking you to remember in your prayers our sick and shut-in members and their families, especially Brother Louis Green, who was admitted to the University Hospital on Thursday. Um, he's recuperating, but not ready to come home yet. We also ask you to remember in your prayers, families of Mr. Dudley Wright and Miss Yvonne Grant. The Mother's Union pre-barbecue, pre-Mother's Day barbecue, is scheduled for May 10th, um, and you can get tickets from Mrs. Jacqueline Allen and Miss Angela Nelson. The BSA barbecue is scheduled for June 28th, and further details will be communicated to you. June 1 and 2, we will have the annual Ealing Conference, and this year it's going to be a one-day a fair at the Jamaica Conference Center, downtown Kingston at Port Royal Street. Um, there's going to be a cost of $15,000, which will cover registration, among other things. And there will also be a shuttle service from St. Luke's Church down to the Conference Center because, you know, the parking down there is not so great. Um, the Anglican Women's Cursilio, um the weekend retreat will be in July, on July 11th to the 14th at the Hillcrest Diocesan Center in St. Anne. Bible study continues Thursday at 7 p.m. on the Zoom platform. Today, the Women's Auxiliary has ripe banana on sale over by the church hall. And on Wednesday this week, they Soup kitchen will continue between the hours of 12 noon and 3 p.m. 3 p.m., I'm sorry. Services will be at St. Paul's today at 11 o'clock, and Brother Lenz it will be the preacher. Um, our visitors, at the end of the service, we'd like to invite you over to our church hall for a little pick-me-up. Brothers and sisters, please... Have a productive week, and may God continue to bless us all. Sisters and brothers, on behalf of the we who have come to share with you, we express thanks for the warm welcome on behalf of our choir director and the choir and the servers. 
We appreciate the welcome that has been extended to us. And so as we go forth into the week, we take with us the presence of the risen Christ to strengthen us to proclaim that Christ is risen. The hymn 387. <laughs> 